At the far northern end of Australia, you'll find the city of Darwin, capital of the Northern Territory and the starting point of my trip. Situated on the Timor Sea and with a population of only 145,000, Darwin is a small and beautiful city that acts as a gateway to an array of national parks, wetlands, and of course, the outback. Although I'm excited to begin my backcountry adventure in Kakadu National Park, a place that's famous for bringing Crocodile Dundee into our world, this is my first time in Australia. And so, to get oriented, I set out to explore Darwin and enjoy the city before heading into the outback. While exploring, I'm told by a number of locals that if I really want a good first taste of the Australian way of life, that I need to check out the Mendel Beach Sunset Market. The market is buzzing with activity and energy. It's an exciting place, but I think I'm most excited about trying the local food. And I can't think of a better way to get a taste of Australia than with a kangaroo burger at the Roadkill Cafe. Number nine for two. Thank you so much. Help yourself. This is uh, Mr. Dunder Napkin. What, uh, do you recommend anything in particular? No, I made the move. I make all those sauces and I reckon they are... They're just the way, on. right the way they need to be. <laughs> Whoa. That's a hell of a burger. As evening approaches, the crowd gathers on the beach to watch the sunset and celebrate the end of another spectacular day in the Northern Territory. Although I thoroughly enjoyed my day in Darwin, it's time to leave the city behind, and I'm really looking forward to getting my first taste of the Outback. To show me around, I've been joined by local guide Saab Lord, an interesting name for a unique character. Saab literally grew up in the bush and has been guiding in the outback for decades. So when you think of Crocodile Dundee, well, here he is in real life. We are heading to Kakadu National Park, a massive protected area that is home to a precious ecosystem and a stunning array of wildlife. While driving, Saab is only too happy to share stories of what it was like growing up here. But before we get too far, Saab has a little surprise for me. Or maybe it would be better described as an initiation. You're gonna do this? Hey. What's happening? Okay. So see this here? All right. Righto. That's green ink. So you put them in your <laughs> mouth. And you roll them around in your mouth. You roll them around in your mouth. Mm. Do they bite? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Tastes like citrus. Wow. Although it's hard to shake the feeling that Saab is messing with me, I find myself following him into the water to try another Outback delicacy. Keeping our eyes peeled for any signs of crocs, Saab introduces me to bush celery, a surprisingly tasty and nutritious snack that's found throughout the wetlands. Okay. Get rid of that. That's quite good. Having endured my first survival lesson, it's time to move on, because Kakadu National Park is only a short drive away. On our way to Kakadu National Park, we stop to inspect a smoldering forest, the product of an age-old Aboriginal hunting technique used to flush animals from hiding. Although the use of fire in hunting might seem destructive and wasteful, Saab explains that the Aboriginal people have been successfully living off the land for over 40,000 years, and that the brush fires help reset the native flora. Continuing on our journey, I'm excited to reach the Aboriginal Community Center, to learn more about their way of life and how they've survived in such a harsh landscape. But even more interesting to me is the vibrant culture and their unique Aboriginal artwork. 
You know Qantas, the Qantas planes, some of his designs are on the Qantas planes. Oh really? Yeah. He's a very well known artist within the, within the industry for a painting like he's very sought after. Oh wow. Yeah. And he does have a distinguished style. He does mostly rock art style, which is single hatching. That's oh, beautiful. Sometimes it takes me two days. Sometimes it takes me a week. In preparation for our cockatoo trek, Saab prepares some ochre face paint, intent on making sure I'm well initiated before we head out. At least this time, it doesn't involve eating anything. At the community center, we meet Roland, a local art expert and hiking guide, and we begin our trek into Kakadu. We're heading for some nearby bluffs that showcase a very special art gallery. Telling the stories of an ancient way of life, it's amazing that the murals are in such pristine condition with some of the cave paintings dating back as far as 10,000 years. For like we ate these old animals, and so they came back these hills and start to paint in the wall. So there is a couple of old ones just around the corner, okay, um, which are boomerangs, and it's, they're about six and a half thousand years old, okay? But these ones here, depicting the fresh water period, what was available, so there's flying foxes there, the big nice wallaroo. Oh, over here? Yeah, so it's about 1,500 years old. Yes. This one's 1,500 years old. Yep. Oh my goodness. Never seen anything like this. After a fascinating walk through time, we say goodbye to Roland and continue our hike deeper into Kakadu National Park. Now mid-afternoon, without a cloud in sight, it's an incredibly hot and humid day to be on the trail. No stranger to intense heat, Saab knows exactly where to go. <laughs> Used to the heat, but not the humidity out here. Those pools sure do look inviting though. So Sab, what do I do if the uh, crocs start nibbling on my toes for appetizers? What's the proper survival technique? Is to poke them in both eyes with your thumbs. Jam in the eyes? Yep. Before they take you under? And then you take off and I'll come after you, okay? <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> Let's do this. Swimming holes in the desert are just about my favorite thing. But when you're in Australia, it's important to understand that there might be bigger and toothier creatures enjoying the hole too. Despite the warnings, the water is just too beautiful and inviting to pass up. Growing up in the desert, I've always felt a special connection to these types of landscapes, and I appreciate the balance of the harshness and the beauty. In a way, Kakadu reminds me of home. But the thing about the outback is that it's much more than just a desert. It's a diverse place filled with life. And so we hop on a boat to explore a very different part of the park. This is the Yellow Water Billabong. Lying in the heart of Kakadu National Park, Yellow Water is a stunning wetland consisting of river channels, floodplains, and swamps. It is a photographer's dream as everywhere you look, there is some strange and beautiful creature. With a third of Australia's bird species found here in the area, there is nowhere else quite like it. To conclude our adventure in Kakadu, Saab has one more place to show me. As we resume our hike and Saab continues to share stories with me, I marvel at the depth of his knowledge about the outback. It's obvious that he's passionate about this place, a place that he's spent his whole life exploring.
As we climb, the exposed granite that erupts out of the plains looks primordial, like we're hiking on the skeletons of the earth. I feel privileged to be able to explore this place with Saab, and among those privileges is getting to see Saab's favorite viewpoint in all of Australia. My first taste of the Outback has been amazing. There's nowhere on the planet quite like this. I'm excited for what's next as we continue to explore Australia's Northern Territory.